Hello and welcome to part 4 of the morning series. Today we're gonna create a task that's a little bit more complicated than the others. So we're gonna retrieve our appointments from our Google Calendar. There are several ways to do that, but I will use today the XML file of your Google Calendar. So we're gonna do some variable splitting, etc, etc. So first of all, let's see what's happening here. In the background you will see here my calendar and the red line is the time now. So we are right now 1 o'clock and 9 minutes in the morning. So we have an appointment before the red line and we have also three appointments after the red line. So I'm only interested in the appointments that are coming, not in the appointments in the past. So I created a task for that. I created that task a long time ago but I will re-upload that again in this tutorial. So I hope you like this. First of all let's see what it really does and how it looks on my phone. Let me open Tasker and here is my task. So as you see we have 25 actions but I'm not gonna explain everything because I've explained several things also in other tutorials as well. So if you don't know what you're doing, please watch also my other tutorials as well. So when I play my task, let's see that. You have three appointments today. The appointments are test appointment, upload a tutorial, have dinner. So as you saw, we heard three appointments left. Test appointment, upload a tutorial and have dinner and not the appointment before the red line. So it's very important that we do this this way. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain everything but it's gonna take a while. So hang on on this. Okay, the first thing you need to do is go to your Google Calendar and go to your calendar that you want to use. For example, this is my personal calendar. I'm sorry because it's also in my own language but I hope you can and follow what I'm doing right now. Okay, we click on the arrow and then click on calendar settings and then you will see several things. When you go down you will see here the address for the calendar and the private address. So we're gonna use the XML file. I'm not gonna click on the XML file because then you will have my private address. So I'm not gonna share that. Okay, when you have done that you have a link and let me open my notepad and I'm gonna close my phone right now. So we will have something like this http google.com calendar feeds and then your email and then you will have a private code and then slash basic and then we're gonna add something like this this is a very long code and I'm gonna explain what's happening right there so we're gonna split that later on so for now the first thing you have to do is remove the basic okay and then we're gonna add this code and we are interested in the start min code a start min code is a start date and the time for looking for our appointments and then the start max start max is the code when it stops looking for our appointments so the day start at 000 and ends at 23.59.59 okay and then we're gonna add another code and that's this code. This code will give us the result in a clean format. So we can use that later on. So let's open our phone right now. So the first thing I'm doing is set a variable calplink and calplink stands for the calendar private link. The calendar private link is this code. You can copy that from your Google Calendar. Then we have also a call view and the call view is hold this 
is code. Pretty print is true and show deleted is true and show hidden is true, etc. etc. So this is the variable call view as you see right here. Let's go back and then we have also call foo is full and then question mark. That's this part. And then we're gonna do some other things. As you see, the start date is the date of today, starting at midnight and ends at 23.59.59. So whenever I execute that task, it has to change the date and the time. So in this case, the time would be variable and the date would be also a variable. I hope you understand that. So we're gonna use variable set cal date to global variable date on our phone. Okay, and the time we're gonna split with a point so we have time one and time two time one would be the hours and time two would be the minutes and then we're gonna set a call start time to t you will see here t that's the start time and then time one variable and time two and then double point zero zero because those are the seconds okay i hope you understand that so we have our time right now so it's important because when I go back to our calendar, the red line will also move on and we have to change the time automatically. So we're gonna use that on our phone. So this is this part, action number 6. Action number 7 is the call start. We're gonna set call start to start min equal and then our cal date. The cal date is our date right here. And then we use also the call start time. And you saw that in the previous action as well. The call start time is that. So we would have something like this. Okay. We do the same with the stop time. So we set a call stop time to T23. 59 59 that's action number eight so we're gonna move on and we're gonna set a variable call stop to start max and then our date again call date and then our call stop time like here and then our call link is our call full call full is this one then we're gonna do call start is this one and then we're gonna use call stop this and then we're gonna add also call view and call view was all this code so we're gonna move that also in one line so this is our call link calendar link okay and then we do an http get it's quite easy so we use http get google com point calendar feeds and then we use our call link and our call link would be your id gmail private code etc and then after that we add our link like this so we would have something like this this would be the whole code of your calendar when you have done that it's quite easy we're gonna put that also inside the text file appointments today point txt why so i could check that text file on my phone and check if everything is okay then we're gonna read our text file and we're gonna set here that to a variable cal item it's quite easy and then we're gonna do a variable split and we will use the splitter this code as you see open search total result why i will explain that right now so when i open my text file you will see something like this and you will see here generator version etc etc and then you will see here open search total result 3 and uh, we close our code with open search total result and between those brackets we see number 3 and number 3 is our amount of appointments so we're gonna split that we're gonna use this splitter first then we're gonna use variable split again but with this code right now and the result we're gonna set cal items 21 to ctn events i'm using a global variable because i can use that also in other tasks as well like widgets etc etc so we have our amount of appointments right here in cnt events okay 
I hope you understand that right now. And then we're gonna do a variable search and a replace. So if you look to our text file, you will see several code. And the title would be something like this. Okay, so we're gonna do a variable search and replace and we use call items 22 and we're gonna search title type is text point star. And I've explained that also in other tutorials why I'm using point star. So when I open that, you will see here this variable, we search for that and we gonna store that also in variable vals. And I'm using also replace matches and replace with point star. And when I go back, I'm using a for function. And I've also explained that in other tutorials as well. So if you don't know what's happening right there, check my other tutorials. So at the end of the for function, we are gonna do a variable set appointment list to this file is our title. And we use a comma and we use also the append. So it will add the appointments after that. When it finds another, it will add it, etc, etc. Okay, and we close of course with an end for. So our task is almost finished and we have a say command. So here we have a say there are no appointments for today if CNT events is zero as you saw here if we have no results if we have one result it will give us you have only one appointment and that is here our variable appointment list as you see it's also a global variable so I can use that in other tasks as well and then we use here 24 when CNT events is bigger than one, we gonna say you will have CNT events, for example, in my case, three appointments today, and the appointments are and then our appointment list. So this is how it works. And the only thing you need to do is going to our main task, morning task fill. And you will see here, I will do another perform task appointment today. So it's quite easy. So I'm sorry if it was a long tutorial, but it's also a little bit complicated. Remember, this is my way. I created that task by myself, but if you want, there are also other ways to do it. You can use SQLite, but you can use also iCall, etc, etc. So if you want, you can use this task. I will also put the download link inside the description, so you can download it. And the only thing you need to do is changing your private code, right here, your email and private code. So remember that part, your idgmail.com private code, you have to change that in the first action, calplink, and that's what you need. So I hope you found this interesting. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those on my Google community or my YouTube channel. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial of the morning series.